Okay, let's do it. This is the Steinitz channel, and you're about to see some interesting games um, on the eighth day of Christmas. Okay, um, there's 12 days of Christmas, and we're already on the eighth day. And for those of you who never knew about the 12 days of Christmas, it's quite surprising to people, I realize. I'm just doing a few last minute checks here because my my uh, assistant producer Paul is on strike. He went on he went on strike in solidarity with the writers in Hollywood, and my uh, key grip um, Alice is my key grip. She's not here today either, so I got to do everything myself. I'm doing that. Oh, oh, those are my brain waves right up there by the way. Um, those are not easy to get up there either. Let me tell you. Um, I've got the Muse 2 EEG headband. I've got the Mind Monitor software that, you know, receives that information and somehow creates the graph. I have the Stream Screen by HTTP. That's a, a program that can actually just take your cell phone and and um, you know put it out over internet, and that's how it's all working. Um, it's not easy to do, but it seems to be working right now. I've got sound right. Like I say, I'm doing everything myself. I got uh, everybody else, my lighting technicians, my camera people. They're all doing their jobs, and I'm just here in the console making sure that everything is working properly. Um, okay, so it's the eighth day of Christmas, and we're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, That's great. This is a really wonderful uh, time of year, and it's been really good for us uh, here on the channel because I've been having some really uh, great games yesterday. And today, uh, the day before, the day before that, um, yeah, great games in multiple senses. Um, you know, winning some spectacular ones, losing a few too, but winning some really good games without any mistakes or inaccuracies, which really helps educationally f for us to do the postmortems and go through the analysis. But, it, you know, the main thing is is, is having fun and having a good attitude and that's basically what it's all about so without any more ado I'm going to um, I'm going to introduce you to this game that's on the screen right now this was a game played by um, oh my 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 camera guy's telling me to take out the glasses off he's getting some reflection or something okay that's no problem Just take them off and you know, I've got some glare here and everything from the from the interior lights, but it's okay. Um, this was a game played by a guy named Adolf Anderson, who's considered one of the biggest attacking players of all time, one of the greatest. Did a lot of, uh, he has what's called the Immortal game, for example, that is probably the best game ever played in chess for all ages. And in this game, uh, it was played in 1851. Game we're going to look at right now. Um, it was played between Adolf Anderson and George Perigal in London on June 16, by the way. Um, it's a King's Gambit accepted, and the variation is called uh, Kizaritsky Gambit, Long Whip, it's called. So this is going to be a kind of an interesting game. Those of you who follow my channel know that I play a variation always of the... It's either an irregular game depending on what um, white opens, but I, I'm going to play always... Um, I'm going to always play the Carol Can against white if he opens Pawn to King 4. And when I open with white, I always do some variation of the King's Gambit. And I've got some pretty interesting uh, variations. I can do a King's Gambit against practically anything that Black tries. So uh, that's why we're going to study this King's Gambit right now. 
uh, played by Adolf Anderson. So without any more ado, let's just uh, click through this. I've got it imported already into Lee Chess and under the Chess Engine. You can see here in the Chess Engine that just like King Scambits always do, and according to um, according to the Stockfish, Black normally starts out with a slight advantage in the King's Gambits. And then Anderson just plays um, a good game all the way up to that point. Apparently right up to there, there's not really. Maybe a, we'll see, but let me see. Uh, Adolf Anderson has one inaccuracy, no mistakes, no blunders. And his opponent had uh, actually two blunders. And there they are. You see the red. You see the red dots there and there when I put the mouse here. Those are the two blunders. That first thing, that first little bump there, is just an inaccuracy. So they were both playing basically a perfect game up to here. Um, just one inaccuracy. But it's because of the pressure that Anderson was putting that um, he he basically forced his um, his opponent George Perigal into you know make making this mistake uh we'll, we'll see we'll see how that goes now as we click through here and discuss discuss how it is uh look at those brain waves huh delta delta always goes up high uh you'll see the patterns after we move through this chess game we'll do some more um chess playing on ourselves and that's when you really see the brain waves happening Well, you can see them up there. Um, they do tend to flatline a little bit. Um, that has a little bit to do with a number of factors that I've been working on. Um, so, you, you know, but we do get we do get a lot of really good data uh, in between the flat lines. Uh, they're just for a few seconds normally the flat lining. So. Let's go ahead and click through this. It's going to be a very interesting game. Um, Adolf Anderson playing white on a King's Gambit. So, well, there you have it. Um, he plays a King's Gambit, and you see he already dropped down according to Stockfish because it's kind of a iffy move, they say. Uh, this is a. I see this very often. I play the King's Gambit a lot, and players will very often uh, move this pawn out to attack the knight. And when they do that, you know, even in 1851, Adolf Anderson uh, knew what's considered the strongest response. If you look at Stockfish, Stockfish gives this as the strongest response. You move this this pawn up, and that that does a number of things. Um, Basically brings your rook into the game. You want your rook on this on this last diagonal, and when you you know when you move the pawn up, the rook it activates the rook. And if the pawn comes up, you always have options. Um, you know, in chess, there's always options. Um, Adolf Anderson played this. This is a excellent option because it. Um, it threatens to take this pawn immediately. And this pawn is also attacked by the queen. And black uh, defends the pawn because he was going to lose a pawn and that would have been pretty, pretty bad. Uh, jump right in on the chat. I notice I've got 54 viewers already. Um, uh, completely different from any other Twitch channel. I can have... Sometimes 50. I've had as many as 800 viewers and nobody chatting. It's because everybody's just like focusing on the brain waves. They like to watch them go up and down. It's kind of like watching your favorite television sitcom. You just zone out watching those. Uh, so I don't get a lot of chatters. But those of you who are, you know, you watch the brain waves, you know, enjoy them. But at the same time, if you chat a little bit, it's also good. So. So I play through this. Don't be shy to jump in there and chat a little bit. So we got the um, 
that pawn, uh, black's king side is like really opened up now. Uh, white's king side too, but everything has been going uh, in a logical way. And look at this, king's gambit. Um, Adolf Anderson really knows how to play this. He's got he's got his knight and his bishop coming against his pawn now. Looks pretty strong, doesn't it? I mean, that pawn, if that pawn falls, it's going to be a check, and it's not going to look pretty for for black. So, but black has this resource. Um, it's about the only resource to protect that pawn without losing material, because obviously if you protect it with the queen, it won't be good. And if you protect it with the rook, it's inferior to to protect it with the knight. So um, black is hoping, is hoping that in this opening, his knight is going to be able to hold this pawn, which is protected by the knight and the king. Now, white, without any hesitation, is just coming out. You know, he's just attacking. Uh, every move is really counting because he's not just threatening to take this pawn with his bishop. After he takes this pawn, he's threatening to take the only defender of this pawn. So it's looking dire, in a sense, for black. But you'll see, look at, look at the... The graph here, black has a number of resources still. Black is right now it's like zero zero. And black is saying, okay, go ahead and take the pawn, whatever, but I'm gonna take your knight. And after you move your knight, then this pawn will be protected just by the king and won't you know won't phase me very much, whatever you do. So uh, Black is forcing the, the knight out of there. Anderson complies. He's figuring, well, I don't want to lose my knight this early in the game. and I don't want to sacrifice him here. It would just be sacrifice, take here, take here. The king comes out, and um, white lost his attacking pieces, and Black is looking really good, plus a piece ahead. So um, he just retreats the knight. Wow, look at that. Uh, black, look at my delta as I, I'm doing this. Even though it's, um, it's um, you know, a vicarious game and everything, but my delta still goes up really, really high when I see, when I see a move like that. This is, a, this is um, a sharp move. It's a very... Strong move, uh, penetrating deep into White's position, threatening to take a pawn here. It'll be one, one move away from queening. It'll also attack his rook. It hems in his queen really good. But that's that looks really strong. It opens this knight up to attack, but the knight is protected by the by the rook and the bishop, so shouldn't be any problem. Let's see what Anderson. Let's see what Anderson did now as a, as a response. Well, he took that bad boy. I mean, he came up there and Anderson said, well, you're, you're going to be eliminated. And, okay, before I click the next move. Okay, so Black, a lot of beginner players would just, when a pawn takes a pawn and they, they figure, well, pawn's got to take a pawn. but if you notice, um, really advanced players, especially these kinds of masters who are playing this kind of a game, um, they don't just take the pawn if it's not going to give them an advantage. And if this pawn takes this pawn, then black just develops his, his bishop out to here attacking the queen. So um, Anderson's opponent in this case, uh, who is George Paradigal, um, just lets the pawn sit there and develops his bishop out to here, threatening a very nasty check. Because you see this pawn? It's only protected by the rook. And if knight takes, uh, bishop takes the pawn, that's check on the king. That's pretty nasty. 
pretty, pretty nasty. Um, what else can I say? Uh, if the, yeah, obviously, if the rook takes the knight that's losing the exchange, plus the, the queen's just going to come out with another check. So this is looking a little bit... Now, you know, this George Perdigal is keeping Adolf Anderson on edge the whole game. Now, let's see how Adolf responds. Wow. That's class, you know. Um, in my opinion, that's an excellent developing move because he wants to develop his knight out. In the night, I just can tell you from experience, you don't want to really block in him in this queen pawn because he's very often coming up into here to protect that. So he brings his bishop out first so he can bring his, his knight up behind. He's just developing a pace. And he's saying, well, if you want to take that pawn, go ahead and take it. I'll develop my my queen. And, you know, black has this, this resource. But, uh, you know, white's queen has many places to go. So there he goes. He took it. He took that pawn and put the white king in check. And in the king's gambit, this very, very often happens. You're going to get a check by the bishop or the queen right here. And normally the best place for the queen, the king to go is over here. But he has other options. He can go here or here. And I think in this case, if I remember correctly, Adolf Anderson brought the, the king up into here. Because he's got a lot of pieces developed. He's got his rook in a good position. He's got a lot of resources, and he can bring his king basically out of the fray. With his king in this position, you can see there's not much that can attack him because he's behind the rook, the bishop that's on this black diagonal. So let's see, let's see what he does. Yeah, he moves up into there. So now it's it's black's turn. Black does a developing move. He's thinking, well, you know, you've got a bishop out there, really strong. You know, I will move mine out there. Um, basically, just put the question to the bishop. Are you going to take me? If you do take me, I'll take with a pawn. Maybe get a pawn a little bit closer to the the center. And I don't. Black is not anticipating any checks on the white diagonal here. That's very important in these king king pawn openings, where you don't want this pawn to open up. But in this case, he's taking the white square bishop and the queen. It's going to be hard to come somehow onto this white diagonal, you can see, because of this pawn here and that pawn. So that doesn't look like a bad move. But that was the first inaccuracy. Not a mistake, but an inaccuracy according to Stockfish. And white takes him. And that's very common. I see that very often in the king's gambit where you take something there and open up this this pawn. And you open up that diagonal. Now, I don't know how Anderson is going to exploit that, but we'll pay attention and see. What is Anderson going to do now? He's, you can see on the stockfish he's ahead just a little bit. Okay, well, that's something. Once this pawn moves out of here, the, suddenly the knight can infiltrate here, attacking the rook and the bishop at the same time. And because the bishop is already attacked by the rook, that's going to be very problematic for black, to say the least. So black has to do something about the, the knight coming into that space. And that's what he does. He brings his queen out, which looks like a sharp move. He's got to develop his queen. Uh, he wants to castle, obviously, on, on queen side. So he's got to get his queen out and then his knight out so he can castle. And this is a much better move to protect this white square than bringing the, the rook over for that very reason that they, it's good to bring the, the queen out. Oh, wow. Now, what is that? Let's look at the position before that happened. Look at that. The knight is sitting here. 
And Anderson suddenly says, well, I'm just going to take this pawn. Huh? How can you do that without losing a piece? Can anybody see that? I mean, if there was... If there was... Oh, yeah, you can see how it is. See, the queen... Remember the queen was protecting the bishop the whole time? He protected this beautiful check with the bishop, and the king moved away. But if the knight takes the pawn, the queen is no longer protecting the bishop, and the bishop falls. So... White will win a pawn and a bishop against the knight. So he takes the pawn. Black takes the knight. And white takes the bishop. So far, so good, right? Now you're thinking, eh, this is not such a spectacular game. You know, I've seen a lot of games like this. Well, you maybe have, you maybe haven't. But we're going to see some fireworks really soon. Black says, well, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'll just take that pawn. It doesn't look like a bad move to me. Looks like a good move. I mean, Black also wants to develop this this uh, knight. But because his king is not in danger of getting checked or anything, maybe it's good to just take him before, you know, white takes in this direction and to completely destroy his black position over here. So that was, that was a good move. And now, wait, let me see, because uh, I'm going to go back so you can see what happens. Okay, so the rook takes the the pawn now. It, Lee Chess has this slight disadvantage that at certain moments it just flashes a whole bunch of arrows all over the place, and I don't know how to get rid of those things. Um, but there you go. Uh, the rook takes the the pawn. And now Leeches is saying what should happen is the knight should come out. And it's also saying that what um, uh, George, George actually did, now his name was George Perdigal. Uh, what George Perdigal actually did was was not it was not the correct move. Uh, to his dismay and his dismise, uh, he he moved the pawn up here, and that was that was. If you look right here, you can see that was his first blunder of two. This is a blunder. He should have gotten that knight out of there and then castled as quick as quickly as possible. He would have only been down. Um, just a just a pawn. One point two pawns, no big deal. Oh, look at the brain waves; they're doing good. Um, the delta is still on top. It's dropping sometimes a little bit be below the alpha. The alpha and the delta are fighting a little bit there, struggling to see which is going to be on top. So that means I'm not having any great insights because when the insights are really strong, the delta is like a lot higher. Okay, so here we go. Um, that's the blunder. Two question marks. And can you see why that's a blunder? Can anybody, how, how many viewers can tell me, like, why is that a blunder right there? I mean, obviously the, it, the knight is under attack, but it's also defended twice. To me, it's the biggest blunder positionally. Black has got to, has got to get castled. I don't. I just don't understand why. It, 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 that's like a blunder. I mean, the pawn was sitting there. If he wants to take it, let him take it. But you know, it's just going to be lost in any case. It can't come down. Let's let's see let's see what happens. Uh, let's see what White does now. White plays a strong move. Um, what Black should have done. Both of their, they first, both uh, sides developed their king sides. And now Black should have um, castled queen side and 
and white now is developing his, his, his queen knight according to the basic rules of chess, right? you got to do that. If you break the rules, you pay. There's consequences. Okay, let me let me just go back. So, uh, white comes out there, and then after white comes out here, okay, you can see the two green squares where where white moved. Black came back here, and it's like black is, in a sense, kind of screwing up again. Why doesn't he? Go on that side. Why doesn't he get ready to castle? He just doesn't do it. So it's a rook trade. And just positionally, this looks good. And I'll tell you why it looks good. Uh, rook takes rook. Knight takes rook. Now think about it. A knight normally has, if it's in the center of the board, a knight has eight squares it can move to. I just noticed my theta went really, really up high. Maybe it has something to do with the analysis because I'm analyzing the position. But the white, the black knight would normally have eight squares to go to if it's out here in the center. Positioned over in the corner, it only has two squares. Its, it's mobility has really decreased. So it was just a rook trade. But by trading the rook, Anderson also got black's knight relegated to this corner position. You could say shunted into the corner without a lot of places to move out of the corner. And that's even worse. He's got a check. But black has resources. Black can bring the knight out of the corner and block the chest at the same uh, check at the same time. Now white's looking really strong. Remember in the beginning when black uh, came down here and checked the king, and the king had to go up into the square. But the king has been very comfortable there. It's a nice place for white's white's queen king. So this was one of Black's strongest pieces, and it's going to fall. But instead of just taking him, White is doing the proper move, developing a rook for the rook to take him. Now black finally develops that uh, queen pawn, uh, queen knight. And now black, uh, white does this. White uh, takes with the rook. And now even though black can finally castle, except he can't because now the, the knight is attacked twice. It's defended by the king and the queen, but the king cannot castle because then the knight will fall. So black says, well, I've got this resource. I'll block your knight, your rook from taking that knight. And I'll also attack your queen at the same time. White, instead of retreating the queen, brings the queen in closer. He's got a pin on this, this uh, knight right here. And... The knight can take this pawn, but Anderson had this all calculated. If that knight takes the pawn, that's check. And you think, oh, no, then black's going to take the queen. No, but it won't because the queen is also protecting the pawn. So the knight takes the pawn. Then the queen can take the knight. And then if the queen takes the queen, the knight also protects here. So everything's covered. Everything's covered by Anderson, and now we'll see what Black does. Oh, wow, another mistake. Another big mistake because, you know, George Pettigall was thinking, well, you know, I can do this trade out here in the center and everything, but I just, my king is in trouble. I got this rook over in the corner. Let me bring my king up, protecting my knight, because the, the knight was attacked twice, and now I'll protect the... He's thinking, oh, this is a good move. I can protect my knight. I can also, next move, I can bring my rook over here. I kind of like equalize here. But what did Anderson do? What did Anderson do now? Let's see. Right there. Right there. Because you see what happens? 
Pedigal was thinking, well, you know, let's go back one move so you can see. After the knight comes here, Pedigal is thinking, well, if he takes here, I can take here. He takes me, the king comes. But that's, no, it's not going to happen like that. Because see this bishop? Watch what this bishop can do. The bishop is on black. The king is on black. The bishop can come to this square. Let's Let's see what happens. He takes... But it's not it's it's not it's not the bishop move like I was thinking because the bishop is going to be protected by this knight. The problem here is if he takes the rook with the queen, this knight comes up and checks both the king and uh, the queen at the same time. So George Parity Gall on this game played in London against Adolf Anderson. On January, on June, June 6th, in 1851, before the American Civil War, a long time ago, um, resigned. So, so, there you have it. Um, uh, King's, uh, King's Gambit. Just click through it really, really fast so you can see how that is. There's the King's Gambit. If they start a Bring it out with those pawns. Remember, that's the best move. Bring the pawn up. And that's how it played out. It's just really interesting uh, game all the way through. The King's, King's Gambit. The King, remember, is going to be very safe on this square. It's like an amazing safe spot. Space uh, safe haven for the King. And there you have it. Um, won't berate this anymore. This was a. Uh, I don't want to. I have to. Well, you have to let sleeping dogs lie, and you don't want to uh, kick a, a sleeping dog that's already dead. So that's um, Adolf Anderson uh, versus George Pedigal. I hope you enjoyed that. And let's now, without any more ado, let's make sure the brain waves are functioning. And they're looking right now for, I think the software is just seeking uh, its parameters. Okay, they're going up and down. So let's go ahead and play a game in Lee Chess and see how the brainwaves are going to respond to an actual game, shall we? An actual game in Lee Chess. Oh, did I forget to mention? Today is the eighth day of Christmas. So Merry Christmas to everybody. Today is the eighth day. As you all know, there's 12 days of Christmas all together. Uh, they begin on January 25. So you got 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, then 30, 31, and today's the first. That's the eighth day of Christmas. And wouldn't you know it, another special thing, today is the first night of the new year. Because last night was really the last night of the old year so today's the first night of the old year it's the eighth day of christmas eighth day if you analyze it according to 12s you're two-thirds away to 12. it's a lot of mathematics there i think we're going to have a pretty good and auspicious moment here uh playing against i don't know if we're going to play against black or against white on um, on Lee Chess, we'll see. So uh, let me get this, uh, create a game. And we're going to be playing a casual game because I get so many chatters on this channel and they're always telling me the moves to make and everything. Um, so, oh, and by the way, just jump right in there on the chat whenever you feel like it because nobody's chatting. They're all like mesmerized by the brainwaves and just zoning out watching them. So if you're not zoning out and you can actually have some abilities to chat, just go ahead. Okay, so it's standard. It's five minutes, casual. And we're going to click here. And if we get white, we're going to play the King's Gambit. If we get black, we'll hope to play... Okay, we're going to play the Carol Can. Because if Carol can, we can too. Like, don't forget that. If you just remember that lemma, you'll never lose on the Carol can. If she can do it, you can do it. So, 
without any more ado. Look at that. Okay, you know, we're just going to force that knight out of there. Um, I'm going to protect that knight. I'm going to see, I'm going to protect that pawn and just see what happens here. I've seen this before, I think. So I'll protect the pawn with the bishop. Now he always gets a little bit um, kind of wondering what to do now. Got to develop. Why don't I get this knight out? This knight out of here because the knight is attacking this pawn, and if I just kick him out of there, uh, well, that's something. I just take him. I don't know if that's a sacrifice or what. Um, wow. So you know, when you see something like that, it's usually best just to trade off, especially when you're a piece ahead. Uh, my king is a little bit exposed there. What should I do? What should I do? I gotta think fast. Can't trade off anymore in the center. Why don't I just um, bring out a knight? My king is still protected. He moves his pawn up. He'll be able to attack on the on the white diagonal. He can't really attack too strong here because I got the knight and I I can advance his pawn. That doesn't look too bad. Um, I could come up here with my bishop, but the queen will just come down here anyway. I think the best developing move is this one. I'm going to lose that pawn, but that's fine with me. Already a piece ahead, and I should get... I should be able to get some action here. I'm going to lose another pawn, too, if I'm not careful. Um, I'm going to do this. I got to do some developing moves. He's going to take my pawn, but I'll bring my knight up here, protecting my bishop with my queen and attacking his queen at the same time. I want to bring my knight closer over here. If I bring my knight up here, it'll maybe force a trade or something. I've got four pieces to his one piece. Okay, I'm going to bring this knight back or maybe better yet it uh offer a queen trade we're doing okay on time we got 321 against 354 that's not a bad thing on the clock we're doing okay on the clock um this knight now can come up here and i'm going to do that because i want to force some trades but before I do that, why don't I develop a rook? Get the queen off on this nasty diagonal. He's got to come off the diagonal because he can't move here because the knight is protecting that point. Um, and now I can do that thing I was thinking about. I can bring the knight up there. I mean, this will just make him think some and maybe I'll win something and I don't want to overthink this position. It looks like I got a lot more pieces than he does. And you see, he's going to force my key, my knight back. But now his pawn is slightly weaker. I mean, there's a possibility I can just take him. I mean, not exactly this move, but at some point it's a little bit looser than it was. I'm going to see what I can do here. I might go for the king the queen and and bishop battering ram um maybe i'll do this he doesn't have any attack on my king side i think i'm just going to break up his pawn position by advancing my pawns because this pawn can come up to here really strong because i got my bishop my two knights protecting it Now, wow, um, I'm just thinking that this looks strong. I don't know why. If he takes it, I open up a strong diagonal against his king, basically, and and take a take the. Okay, I've got different possibilities here. I can take. I'm gonna take because. It's you know I'm a piece ahead and it's a little bit better to trade down so trade it down a piece. 
My king looks like he's in a little bit of danger now. I mean, he can take this pawn and put me in check, and my king will slide over. I think I'll be okay. Now, he's going to put me in check if I don't be careful. So, why don't I just go over anyway? Because he's, he, you know, when they can force you over in the next move anyway, maybe just do it and just go over anyway. I mean, he could basically just force me over. Um... Okay, so should I get the battering ram set up or what? Maybe just offer a rook trade because this rook was over here in the corner in a big way. I have to be careful about this pawn, obviously. I'm going to do the rook trade. Uh, wait, I'll lose this. Hmm, this is tough. Uh, wow, I didn't even see this stuff. What can I do against this? I don't know. I'll think about it and take do the rook trade first. I'm in trouble. I mean, I'm not in big trouble, but I kind of like lost my big advantage that I had. Um, I'm just going to buy time by coming out here. He can't really attack my queen because my... My knight, uh, his knight can't come up into here because of my rook. I got to get my king out from behind that knight on the next move, and I'll bring it. I can do it right now. He's, I'll, I'll lose this pawn, but I think it's better. At least I can move my knight after that. Now let's see what's going to happen. This is a tough move. Um... Well, I'll just come down here, attack his rook. His rook can't... I, before I did that, I made sure his rook couldn't come up here, and it can't because I've got my queen here. So here I have to move his rook. We're still doing okay on the time, on the clock. Uh, we're attacking his... I didn't even see that. I kind of screwed up there. I could have taken his queen. Can you believe that? Um, but anyway, now he takes the knight. I take his... His bishop, he's got to move his rook. Uh, everything's okay, even though I could have taken his queen. I mean, I missed that. That's a blunder. So, why don't I take his rook? No, that would checkmate me. I got to... I don't want to lose time here. Okay, so 59 seconds against 108. And he's going to have to move his rook... And when he does, I don't know what I'm going to do. Maybe just take his knight or something. I don't know. Or come over here. Uh, wait a second. Uh, okay, so. That'll force his queen to move. And it also protects this pawn. And hopefully it'll slow down the game enough. Like give me a, not slow down the game, but I mean give me a little um, time on the clock because I was really, so that attacks his queen and his rook at the same time. And he, he, whoa, look at the data, look at the data, how high it is. It's completely up there. Um, it always does that when I get like a good uh, result, like a kind of a, cool end game result so you know i got the, the the knight here going against queen and rook and my opponent resigned so that was let's do the post-mortem shall we um let's go ahead and do the post-mortem as my brain waves kick in oh wait a second i hear the pizza guy hold on a second I'll be right back. I gotta go pay the pizza guy. I'm, I'm gonna give him a big tip. Yeah, I'll bring the microphone. You can hear me give him the big tip on the eighth day of Christmas. I'm gonna go over to the door. Oh, pizza. Sure. How much is it? Forty six fifty two. Okay, well. Here's a hundred.
Ah, no, don't worry about it. It's the eighth day of Christmas. Keep the change. Keep the change. Oh, and while you're at it, I'm going to start out this new year with good karma. Here's another hundred. No, 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 it's for you. Just take it. Be happy. And I'm going to order again tomorrow night. So if you deliver, there might be more for you. So see you later. Okay, are we back? Oh, sorry about that. I went to get the pizza. I gave the tip like I planned, and then my dongle was disconnected. Can you believe that? I got this. I got this. Um, it, you know, it's uh, one of these these things where it's a wireless thing, and if I go to the door, it happens like that. It'll like stay. It'll stay in focus for a while. Stay connected, and then. After a while, it just like disconnects, and then it's like slow connecting again. It's a Sennheiser, uh, by the way, which is a good German brand, and it works pretty good. It's very light. Um, I like it because it has the actual microphone. I don't like those ones that are like way back here by your ear because you never get really the best sound with those things. Like if you, you see Shakira on stage or... One of these, um, well, who is more, who is hotter than Shakira right now worldwide? I think nobody, but, you know, um, they they have the, the microphones out here by the mouth. So, you know, if you're going to you're gonna be professional, you got to have a microphone like this. So let's do the, let's do this um, post-mortem, shall we? Uh, analysis board and all uh, during the Christmas we've been doing the Carol can as a educational program to, to uh, teach people especially beginners and intermediates how to do the Carol can right so we'll do the same thing now so um, request a computer analysis Let's see how we did. I hope we didn't make like a lot of blunders and mistakes and things as black. Hope we had a good opening at least. Well, black did very well in that, in that but it, it does look really up and down. Um, let me see how many mistakes and stuff. So, wow. Quite a few blunders, it looks like, right there on white. Look at that, like five of them. And I had three, but like really late in the game for some reason. I got like really far ahead, and then and then I had those mistakes and a bunch of inaccuracies. Inaccuracies are not too bad, though. Let's just click through it really quick to see how, how it went. Because it doesn't look that bad. Uh, in terms of a Carol Can opening for uh, for black, so okay, that's the Carol Can. Oh, let me uh, go back to the beginning because some people don't realize what the Carol Can is. So Carol Can is against this opening when white does that and they move their their pawn in front of their king up, and then black does this. It's really strong. I really recommend that you do the Carol Can. It's it's if Carol can do it. You can do it. So never forget that, and you'll be in good shape. So in this case, he really made a big mistake. Look at that. Um, never 
play like White did just then because all of a sudden I'm more than 1.5 ahead. Because he just let me take his pawn and forces his knight out. Um, it just didn't look pretty at all for. Now that was a bad move. I, know, I thought that was a good move, but it says I should bring the bishop out immediately. Hmm. Makes a big difference. Makes a big difference. I have to remember to bring the bishop out. I don't know what the difference is. Let's just look at that to see what the difference would be. I move the bishop out, and then where is white's next move? Let me see. So white's next move is there. And then my next move, I don't know, it's just the order somehow? I don't know why. Um, but anyway, I'll remember to bring my bishop out next time to guard the pawn. My Obviously, my idea was to guard the pawn because his, his knight's going to take the pawn. But I guarded with my my knight. And that moved me way up to there. I mean, I'm still ahead, but I got a lot closer to zero. Oh, let's see what he could have done. He could have brought... Oh! Oh, that's why. When I bring my knight out here, he can bring his bishop over here with a nasty oh yeah I see now he comes up here with a nasty threat here I got to defend with the the pawn and then my bishop is blocked you see you always I think in 99.9% .9 of the cases in the Carroll can this white square bishop is supposed to come out and in this case black uh, white can force me to, to block in the white square bishop if I bring my knight out for assault, the knight's going to protect, the bishop's going to protect, but it's important which order. Okay, so that's something we all learned about the Carol Can. So in this, in this, in this version of the Carol Can, I'll show you how it works, and it's a horrible version for White. But if White ever does this in the Carol Can, and you play the Carol Can, and then you take there, and then they attack your pawn. Make sure you come out with your bishop so that your bishop doesn't get blocked in when he comes out to here. See? So, but he didn't He didn't see that. He did that, and now suddenly you see the, the brown line here on the analysis. The brown line shows where I am, you know, back basically where I was before. Because I, I um, blocked there. He castled, which is also... Uh, kind of like a big mistake. He's down minus three already. Minus three. That's how strong the Carol Can is. And now he's a little bit lower, even. You know, because he he gave away a piece, and he stays low uh, throughout this game. We, you know, you guys will remember I was playing this, and I was playing it basically correct. Um, I didn't have any any inconsistencies or any mistakes in the very beginning of the game no inaccuracies my inaccuracies began here and these little i always look at these according to the ocean like the white is the land and the black is the ocean so this was almost all ocean with the one little island there and i made my mistake on these little mountains under undersea mountains and then I let him come up above the surface a little bit, and then he went back down. So that kind of like capitulates that, recapitulates that game. Um, but I was doing perfect in here, no mistakes, no inaccuracies. I forced just, I offered the queen trade, but he decided to bring his queen back. And then I brought the rook over because I didn't like his queen on this diagonal. I talked about that during the game. And I moved the knight up and then moved the knight back, but at least I weakened his position a little bit. And he got like a tempo, but I'm not in any big hurry right now anyway. Oh, I didn't even see that. Um, that was one of my inaccuracies. I didn't see that. But you see what I could do? I can take this pawn. Even though it's guarded by two pieces. And only attack by two pieces, and that's not good. You have to have more pieces because you're using one of your pieces to take it, and then he's got two pieces. So you always have to have like an extra piece to do the last take, right? 
So, but I do have an extra piece because if I take and then he takes and I take and then the queen takes, so you see the bishop, dung, check right there, and then the queen falls. So that was my my bad. I should have seen that, but I didn't. I I just moved up there during the game. I said well, I'm gonna move up there to kind of like screw him up, and then I moved up there. And we're still doing really good here. Um, it's all ocean, still ocean, still ocean. It's doing good. That's interesting that it said that was a bad, really bad move. Why did it say that was a bad move? Let me go back to see why that was a bad move. I, you, you will remember from the game, I was debating if the king should go over. And I thought, I'm just going to bring him over because he's going to put me in check anyway. And he's going to go over. Oh, again, I didn't see that. Pawn move. Wow. That pawn is so weak. I I could have I could have taken the pawn. He has to move his 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 queen and I can, I take his 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 rook. I I really screwed up there. I I wasn't even looking at that pawn. I was like looking more for checkmates and stuff and Okay, so now we're basically got he's got this little island here and then he made this mistake and then I moved over and he he didn't take there okay now it's like now we're down here see the brown line we're really down here and we're completely winning and we were winning on the clock too so so that was the main thing and then I came here forking his queen and his rook and I am eight um you know the score is eight eight to zero so well i don't know if you like that game it was a pretty good game or not i didn't get a lot of chat during that game but uh i know it is the eighth day of christmas most people are probably celebrating right now so but jump in on the chat would you like to see another one what do you guys want to do next you want to see another, should I play another game in real time with the brainwaves? Or should we analyze a game? Where, where, jump in there on the chat and tell me what you want to see next. A real game in real time with brainwaves? Or would you prefer analyzing another game by Adolf Anderson? If that's your choice, let me, let me know. Jump in on the chat and tell me. Okay, well, nobody's jumping in on the chat, so I figure that even though I like to be very instructive in teaching games from Adolf Anderson, I figure, why don't I just play a game by myself, you know, like, why don't we just do, create a game, you know, in Lee Chess? And I'm going to do this with a casual game because people are always chatting with me and telling me the moves. And it's not really fair. Okay, we're going to do a King's Gambit. King's Gambit, just like the first game that we played tonight. And we're doing it with the brainwaves. So remember to watch the brainwaves as they go. This is a King's Gambit, right? So that pawn's got to come up. And we want to develop king side, so we're going to bring that bishop up. And when that bishop comes there, we always do like that. Because it opens something, some stuff up. Um, he can't. I would like to come up here. He takes there. He takes there. But I can't really come out here yet. I think I'm going to develop my knight. It is a king's gambit. Now I got two choices. I can castle or move this pawn up. Um, I'm going to castle. Just kind of screw him up a little bit. I know I'm going to castle kingside anyway. And so I'm just going to do it. Now I'm going to take, I'm going to move here. He really can't take me because if he takes me, he's going to like, I'll take him and then he loses this pawn. I don't want to take him. Um, I got to get the bishop out. I'm going to get the bishop out right now. I got to get a rook over to here. So I'm going to do this and, 
I got to get this rook over to here because it, it opposes the queen. And you see this pawn can take this pawn. And then you see what's going to happen. See what's going to happen on this file. How this pawn is being defended by a, by a pawn and a knight. And then I take the, the, the pawn here and win a pawn. So let's see if it works. I don't know if this is going to work, but we'll try. Suppose I take this now. What's going to happen? I don't know if this is going to work or not. I'll try and see. I really don't know. We'll see if this works. Oh, I didn't see that. I, he had a check against me, but we'll still win this game, I hope. I'm going to bring my my king over there. So we're kind of like a piece down now. But I've won plenty of game being more than a piece down. It's like you go a piece down, you go a piece up. Doesn't make a big difference either way usually. Okay, I'm going to protect the bishop. He can take this pawn, but this knight's got different places he can go. Um, okay, I guess I fooled you. He was going to force a trade there, but now I brought the bishop back to protect the pawn he was going to take. So, who knows? We might be able to win on time. There's different strategies now how to win games when you're losing. One is to... Okay, just analyzing things here a little bit. I think I don't like this whole black diagonal thing that he has there. So if I bring the the knight over here, his queen's got to move. And now what? Um, I'm just going to take him there and see what happens. If I go there, he can take with a rook, and that's not too good. Going to screw him around a little bit. Um, just bringing the, the rook out maybe forces him to make some mistake. Who knows? I have no idea. Everything looks protected right now, so I'm going to come up. Oh no, my that would that would expose my rook. Okay, I'm going to first get his queen off in there. Then I'll do that other thing I was thinking about. Oh, no, 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 no. That was a bad mistake. Okay. That was almost unforgivable. That was unforgivable. I'm going to do a new opponent. Very sorry about that. That was uh, supposed to be an instructional game. Oh, look at the brain waves. Did you see how they readjusted after I got the new game? They always do that. That's why we're all adjusted. That's why we're all addicted to chess because when you lose a game, you can just begin another one. You erase the board and start another one. And, you, and did you see the effect it had on my brainwaves? Did you see that effect? You could see it graphically right there. Wow. It was like the brainwaves just completely revitalized. Obviously, we love that. Okay, I'm going to protect this knight here. And I'm going to bring this. I shouldn't do that prematurely, though. I don't know. I got to bring. The, I got to develop a little bit more before I set up this battering ram. When they when they move that pawn up, you just take that as a matter of course. Ah, now it's tough. What am I going to do with this bishop? I guess i got to bring him back to here. The bishop in this position really defends against the knight very well. And now I can bring this bishop here attacking the knight. This is good so far. This is very good. Okay, so the, the rook opposes the rook. Okay, everything is going good so far. It looks interesting. Looks very, very, very interesting. This is like the crux of the game. 
And when you have a crux of a game like this, it's good to force that bishop out of there. Oh, <laughs> uh, wow. But it's not going to be so easy. Um, I'm going to take this, and then I'm going to open up my king side like crazy. But hopefully, I've seen this game many, many times. I'm thinking that he won't have an ability to exploit me very much. In fact, I can basically win the game right now if I just take the knight and then come down here. It'll be checkmate. Uh, we'll see. Well, I couldn't take the knight. Couldn't take the knight. How else can I do it? As far as I can see, I got to... I'm going to have to get some pressure on this file. Oh, that was bad. Um, I was thinking, I was overthinking that. I was getting pressure on this file and I just lost a piece. Oh, well. Um, like I say, it's all about. It's all. I don't want to give him too much time to think here. My only chance, my only chance is to checkmate this sucker. And if he takes me with his knight, I come here and then he's going to put me in check probably, but then I'll win the piece. Oh, he took that. Oh, I'm going to resign. I don't know. I thought I had that figured out. I, thought, I really thought I had that figured out. Let's do one new opponent, and if we don't win this one, we're going to call it quits because this is bad this is like horrible chess but do we are we getting some good brainwave we are we are getting a lot of really good brainwave activity it's like some of those brainwaves tonight have been just so spectacular some of those patterns like right now as soon as i realized oh i can i can you know get a positive from this i thought okay so that's why my delta went way up. I, uh, the delta is the red one. My delta went way, way, way up when I saw that. Now, I've seen this a million times, and I really don't know how to play this, but I love to advance this, this bishop pawn, so I'm going to do that. And, and that's nice to have this, this uh, pawn structure out there. Uh, why not? Why not just did, uh, develop a piece, bring the knight out? I don't know why I was refusing to move. Oh, I got my, I got my dragon natural. I'm going to end it. I had my voice recognition on. That's why I couldn't move my piece. Can you believe that? It's like so ridiculously bad. Okay, I'm going to bring my bishop here. If he attacks my bishop, I'll bring my bishop back. And he doesn't really win a temple or anything. And I would rather have his pawn up here than there attacking that. He can win a pawn here, but this is a king's gambit, so. What do we care, right? I mean, if you're playing the king's gambit, go for it. Play a king's gambit. Gambit is gambit, right? Oh, I've seen this position before. This is nice. This pawn right here really helps. This pawn is obsidian. For you guys that play Minecraft, black cannot eliminate his own piece. He can take pawns and stuff from, from white, but he cannot ever get rid of his own piece. So I'm just going to keep playing the clock here, and this bishop will stay here to protect this pawn, and then this queen. I'm going to bring the queen out to here. If he castles, I can bring the... Knight up to here, threatening a checkmate in one. Uh, he can defend it, of course, but I'm not going to defend this thing forever over here. i, I got to move this bishop out at some point, so I'm going to move that pawn up. So should I just bring up that, threatening the checkmate? He can force me back, but I can't come back. 
I think my best point to come back to is just right there. Maybe should have come over here because I don't want to take him ever. That's my strong point. Death Pawn is my strong point in my position right now. Um, see this bishop here is attacking this pawn. I'm thinking about bringing this pawn up. Oh, that was a good reason to bring this knight here because it, it protects this pawn. But that pawn is protected by so you know, attacked by so many black pieces. But still. Okay, so there's one of the black pieces that I'm going to do it. I think that's my chance. I'm going to move it up and attack this pawn because, okay, so what can he do if I come out here? I don't know. I'm just going to see. It looks like it's strong against his king side. He can take me and I take him and then the knight advances. I mean, I got a number of possibilities here. Is this almost checkmate? I think this is almost checkmate because he takes my. I come up there. Now, if I come up here, how can he stop me from coming in here? Can he stop me? I don't think he can stop me. I'm just going to come up here and. Okay, so this is the game we were hoping for. Um, we actually did win a game against a person rated more than 20,000. 20, um, you know, he just took me as a last-ditch effort, a Hail Mary. He put me in check, but that's checkmate. I'm, like, clicking my queen a million times. Oh, I'm in check. Um... That's why I'm going to move my king over because it's going to be checkmate for him next move. He can't really check me. He can bring his queen down again and I'll just take him. But this guy is fritters, as they say. I don't know if you've heard that word before, but we used to say that. Uh, you know, I grew up in a place where they said, well, you're just fritters. And fritters meant, well... That's all she wrote for you. And that was good. So uh, we played a King's Gambit. It was good enough to beat a person rated more than um, 2035. And, of course, it's just casual game. But because I, I explained, I play casual games because my chatters are always giving me lots of advice. And I don't think it's fair to play um, a game on the actual clock with with advice. So. It was just a casual game. But, you know, knowing chess players, they're playing pretty seriously. Like, I play seriously whether I'm playing for keeps, for keeps, as they used to say in marbles, or uh, just casual. It's still chess, you know. Chess is chess. And and let's go let's go through this post-mortem, shall we, and do an analysis board because... We promised to analyze some games um, on the eighth day of Christmas to analyze some games that were King's Gambits for white and for Carol Can for for black. And we analyzed a good Car Carol Can already. We analyzed a good King's Gambit by Adolf Anderson in the very first opening sequence. And now we're going to analyze a game um, that I just played right now in real time on Twitch. Uh, how much? How long was that after Adolf Anderson's game in 1851, June 6, 1851, against George? Do you, do you remember his name? George Pe Pe Perigo, right? That's a weird name. It sounds like danger. <laughs> Danger! Uh, his name was, yeah, Pretty Gal. Um, so, 1851 to 2023, how long is that? It's 100 years to 1951, and then it's 72 years, 73, 72 and a half years. 
172 years and a half. It's a long time from the first game we looked at tonight to the last game. So let's take a look at this, shall we? Um, you can look down here. I, got, I already did the uh, analysis by Lee Chess. It looks so good. We can examine this opening. This is going to be a great opening to examine because look at that. Right up to the middle game, you can just tell by the graph there's no mistakes. There are no blunders because otherwise it would be way up and down. This is an extremely, 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 extremely well-played game, up to the middle game at least. So let's click through the opening sequence here so you can see how to do the King's Gambit correctly. After we got out of the middle game, on the eighth day of Christmas, on the first day of the new year, because you realize that last night was the last day of the last year, and this is the first day of the first of the next year. So on the on this day, we were lucky to play the entire opening flawlessly and then get like a huge advantage in the beginning of the middle game. So let's click through this and see how it goes. Uh, oh, and we had the brainwaves working too. That's another plus because when you get those brainwaves on, you get data, right? And we're going to get some data about how these brainwaves are working. So here we go. We're going to click through this. We moved the pawn up and black attacked the pawn. And black is rated more than 2,000 in this situation. He's probably expecting that we're going to move this pawn up. And if we did that, we would get into some sort of a... It's not a, it's not a big advantage for white. It's the uh, alakine. How do they pronounce that? Alakine, something like that. Um, it's a hard name to pronounce, but anyway, it's like he used to do this and invite the pawn and then it moves around and the pawns are come up here and then, I don't know, it gets to be kind of like a boring game after a while. So, um, it's probably best not to advance that pawn and, and I didn't, I just protected my pawn because I want to play the King's Gambit and the King's Gambit is a very interesting game compared to this. L, that kind, how you pronounce that thing. So now I do the pawn move up because it's no longer that alakine thing because, look, he cannot bring his, his knight here because he brought his pawn here. So um, now he's got to bring his knight back to there. And there's the king's gambit. I told you, I always find a way to transpose into the king's gambit. And the king's gambit is basically the, the king pawn up and then the king rook, uh, the king bishop pawn up, and I got them both up. I realize nothing's been taken yet, but we'll see about that. We'll get a gambit out of this yet. And now I, I went ahead and got those uh, three pawns. I don't know how wonderful that is to have them all protected out there, but the main thing is to get some attacking lines. Okay, so now I, I castled. He took the pawn, and you'll remember during the game, I was remarking how this pawn is obsidian. This pawn right here is the best thing in my position. And people say, how can black's pawn be the best thing in your position? Because it's obsidian. If you ever played mine, Minecraft, you know obsidian is the hardest rock to break. And this is the hardest barrier for black to break. Unless, as long as I can keep it barricaded, he can never attack me on this, on this black diagonal. He'll never attack me. And I'm going to keep that pawn there as long as I can. And you'll see this in many variations of the, of the King's Gambit. And because my opponent is rated more than 2,000, you can rest assured that Whatever level, I mean, most of my viewers are, are beginners to intermediate. This is going to work for you. This is going to work for you, too. Keep the pawn right there. Okay, next move. He brought his queen out. You know, it looks like a good move because it attacks this pawn. It attacks my king at the same time. But remember the obsidian right there? 
the Minecraft Obsidian. Um, it's giving me. It's interesting that Stockfish is giving me. Uh, uh, it it gave me right now. Can you believe that? It gave me an inaccuracy on that move. It's like it, it's giving me this weird signal, but. I had to do something. I don't want to move my bishop. I don't want to move my knights. I don't want to move this bishop because it's protecting the pawn. I'm going to bring my queen over to this side. And you'll notice that we're not very far off at all. Like you know, It's just like I'm playing against this guy. He's rated more than 2,000. I'm a little bit less than 2,000, but it was an even game up to this point at least. And now we go... Right to there. Now it's zero, zero. Okay. And because I got my queen out here attacking on the king's side. He's getting ready to castle. He brings his knight, uh, his bishop, up into this position that looks good, but it's biting against this pawn. His knights are also biting against this pawn. This pawn looks unassailable. I've got the obsidian there. That's my strongest, my strongest piece, by the way, is right there. I move this pawn up. I don't want to bring this bishop up here behind. No, I just brought him up because I want to bring the bishop probably over here, and I don't want to worry about that pawn anymore. Because he's okay. And there, I just brought the the knight up. I, re I remarked about this during the game. It's checkmate in one, and I knew he was going to protect against that, but it does give me some. It does give me a target. Because you see the bishop back here? When I move this pawn up, that pawn automatically becomes a target. And my queen side looks good. I've still got the obsidian there, the uh, my own obsidian here. I mean, he could bring this pawn up. That would probably be a good move for him. Ah, wow. That's not a bad move. And you can see the lead chess. Drop me slightly because of that. And that's not a bad move either, but it's giving me like a uh, exclamation point and a interrogation point because he can take the pawn and I lose a pawn. But this is a king's gambit, remember, and we haven't really gambited a pawn yet. So that's what I told you, right? I told you at the beginning we were going to transpose into a king's gambit, and we finally did because that king's gambit pawn is up there. I'm giving it away. I'm giving it away for a purpose because I have a double attack on that pawn. He takes there. Now, I'm not a master, of course, but you know what separates the masters from the beginners is that, you know, beginners, when they get a take, they just take. And you exchange, and I was thinking, well, should I take the knight? No, I'm not going to take the knight. I'm going to take this pawn down here, get an attack on his king. And notice how I went up on the graph a lot. Stockfish gives me a lot for that move. And now he brings his knight back. And that's a double question mark, because his idea was, oh, I'll bring the knight back, and I'll win a well, I'll win a piece. I'll win a piece because he could have taken my piece. He took this piece. And see how black has four pieces and white has three pieces. But watch my next move. I take his piece. He takes me with the, with the king. And right there, boom. That seals the game. Really seals the game. The king is in danger. And look at that. Checkmate in four. Checkmate in four. How many of you saw that? How many of you saw that? Do you see? Because the pawn is there. The king has got to go over to the back rank. The queen is going to come up into here. And then it's going to come up into here. Now, I want to pause the game for about two minutes. And I want somebody to look at that and tell me if you can find... Uh, continuation where black is not checkmated. I'll be right back while you do that. Take, take
Okay, was anyone able to find it? Did you find the, the continuation? Um, I sure couldn't find it, and Lee Chess couldn't find it either because it is giving me the the checkmate in four. My opponent tried this, moved his king back. Obviously, it's his only move. Uh, the queen comes up, threatening the checkmate in one. The knight comes there, uh, putting my king in check. I need to respond. I took with my rook. He checks me with the queen, attacking my knight. I could have brought the knight here, but I would have prolonged everything because then he just takes with his, his queen. I move the king into that position. And at that point, my opponent resigns because of the queen attack. So let's take uh, another look at that game on the postmortem. We won't beat this to death, but anyway, this is a king's gambit. And I told you it was going to be a king's gambit. And I'll show you the point where it becomes a king's gambit. Because in a king's gambit... You gambit this pawn, and there it is right there. It turned into a king's gambit. I transposed into the king's gambit and won the game. So I don't think we should play another one, but maybe we will because we're just gluttons for punishment. Let's just uh, play one more, and then we'll call it a quits. Oh, what's that? What's he doing? What? in the world what can we do i don't know let's just advance in the middle i don't know it's like maybe i don't know i'm not really thinking this i'm not really thinking this very much he's advancing up the sides he's doing so many strange things um okay i don't want to block in this bishop i'm going to bring him here I think I got to just trade him. His his knight really can't go very far. He's got a good opening. There isn't anything um, wrong with this. Everything is working pretty good for him. I want to take with my knight because I would like to maybe bring the knight up into here. Uh, he can take me there. I'm going to develop this queen. I I want to protect this bishop, but also the queen on this die on this file looks pretty strong. Because I can advance this pawn up, but no, I can't because he's got his knight there. I would like to get rid of that knight if I can, but I can't. I don't know. I don't think he's going. I'm going to be attacked on my king's side, so I'm going to move up this pawn. And this pawn is going to help me advance this pawn up. And this pawn is protected by the bishop. So if I move him up, he takes me there, he takes me there. i got to have one more piece. I'm going to bring the knight up, up into here. I see what he's trying to do there. Maybe I could just bring my knight up like I said I was going to do. Because if I bring my knight up over into here. Now can this knight advance? Oh yeah, he can come up into here. But suppose I bring the knight up into here. Then he really can't advance. Now my knight's doing double duty. He's protecting against this knight. And he's... Hopefully, I don't know how much I can, I mean, pieces can get overloaded, right? But he's also protecting this advance with the pawn. So this could be good. Um, I got to, I'm just going to do that with the pawn and see what happens. Okay, so now I got a chance to trade queens, but it doesn't look good for me. 
I'm going to bring my queen back to here without worrying about this very much. He can advance his knight up, but then I'll bring my queen to another position. I figure he would do that, but I can bring my queen where? Here. I get a, a pin on his knight. Now I'll bring my queen over here. Next, I'll bring my rook over into here. How are we doing on time here? Oh, we're doing okay on time, I guess. This bishop is looking kind of lonely out here. But I can protect him, and if he takes me, I protect again. And Unless he has something really dastardly up his sleeve, the, the bishop is pretty strong there because it's protected by a pawn, and it's also protecting the pawn. Now, if he castles, Okay, I want to bring this over. Before I did that, I made sure that the knight can't advance someplace else. But I just wanted to develop this bishop, I mean this rook, a little bit. The rook was over there in the corner, and he wasn't doing anything. And they always say, well, you got to, you know, get all your pieces developed before you attack. So if I come up here, he's got one. I'm going to come over here because if he castles now, he'll be in big trouble. And now we're kind of like playing the clock. We have a little problem here with the time because we're minute 59. He's two fit. He's got a whole minute ahead. He came up there, huh? This is an interesting move right now for me. Um, I'm going to come up here because it prevents him from castling. The queen is attacking the, the knight now. The knight can't advance because of this pawn. Suppose I bring the knight up, the queen up here. He'll have to move his rook, right? He can't just take the knight right away. I mean the bishop right away. And then I could bring the bishop over here, for example, or something. I don't know how that's going to help me, but is there something I can do? Yeah, I'm going to do that. I mean, I'm just going to play the clock, play the clock down a little bit and see. I can still do this pawn thing, except he'll take this pawn. Ah, oh, wow. This is getting tough now. Should I bring this up? No, because of this. My queen is was doing stellar job, but no, she's a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna come up here because then my rook can come over here. And also, I don't lose more time on the clock. Well, I'm a whole minute down. I can b bring my rook over here because it's going to be protected by the bishop. And that might force his queen into some precarious position, I hope. Or do something, at least. If his queen goes out of there, I can do this advance. And plus, the rook here will be um, really strong. Ah, I should not have done that. I wasn't thinking. The knight comes here and just... Well, it's not too bad. Um, but see, the knight can still come there. Got to do something really smart right now. I don't know what to do. I really screwed up here. He 
He's going to attack my queen and my rook at the same time. I mean, he can easily do that if he wants to. And I'm only got 26 seconds. I got to think of something fast here. I can't do that. I got to bring my king into the corner. I want to get this pawn activated. I mean, he can take my rook, but. He can checkmate me now right here with his queen. But the only thing I can do right yeah, you know, see, he did it. Ah, well, that was a pretty good game. And you look at, did you see how my alpha went way up? My alpha went way up on the top. It's never on top, but it's because I lost the game. But <clears throat> immediately, immediately when you lose a game, you get a suddenly re a sudden relief because it's like oh wow I don't have to play this anymore, and that's why chess is so addictive. You get the alpha wave like really high in the delta two when you win, but then when you lose, you also get like a really big relief. So win or lose, it's uh, how you play the game. So why don't we go ahead and do one more? I got the delta wave high right now, high, really high. Uh, I'm on the graph, and we started the we started the night with Adolf Anderson, and we won some pretty good games. And you'll see that in the some of the analysis if you go back over the the game. We're gonna do a uh, King's Gambit. Now, when they do that, you take that pawn because that's always the best thing to do. Always take that pawn when you see it. After that, it doesn't really matter what you do. You can kind of like play it by ear. Now, he can advance the pawn, but you just take the pawn. That's no big problem. Just take the pawn, and then whatever happens, happens. Um, I'm going to bring the bishop to here because I have like a lot of attacks coming down this aisle. I think they call them aisles. And... Now, if he takes this with his knight, the bishop is going to come back into here. And if he goes there, the bishop is also going to go back into here. I think that's how to play it. And then, see, the knight can come to here. Okay, so in that case, I think it's best to take with the pawn. Because if he takes this with the knight, then this bishop is protecting against the knight's advance, you see. Bishops at this position always help against knights, and then I should be able to move this out and also castle. If he brings his queen out to here, I'll be able to bring this knight up to here, hopefully, at some point, and block. We'll see how this works. Now, in this case, I, could, I can't... I'm going to have to... He's not going to sacrifice his queen against here because I just take with this pawn. But he can do that. But now I'm out of there. I'm gone. So my king has gone out of the center. And now if he takes the the knight, no big deal. Okay, now there's got to be something smart I can do. There should be something smart I can do. I don't know. I'm just going to play the clock. That looks like a pretty good strong move. Maybe I went, uh, maybe I lose a pawn. I don't know, but you know, it is a gambit, right? Uh, king's gambit is a king's gambit. Sometimes you gambit a couple of pawns, even, but as long as you get some play out of it, it's worth it. So we got a gambit going here, a big gambit. I don't want to bring my queen over here because it'll just come up here against that knight. Uh, but I gotta bring my queen over. I'll let the knight come up and then I can bring my queen over here. Up to here. Okay, I would prefer that that knight doesn't come up, so I'm gonna just move that pawn. It's 327 against 346. We're doing okay on the clock. My stymied is knight a little bit. I gotta protect my queen and also protect my bishop at the same time. Was that checkmate? Oh, wow. Wow. Look at 
Look at that. Look how low my brainwaves suddenly got. That was like a shock. That was a total shock. And then they flattened out. And, now, and then they got all jumbled up. Like the alpha went way up on top and then it went way down below. Everything is like topsy-turvy. I don't, oh, what I got? I don't know how I did that. Did I click that? I gotta start another game. I'm just gonna start another game because it wants me to, apparently. I don't know what happened. I didn't even click to start again. Okay, remember this? Adolf Anderson played this, right? And they said to do this, right? I remember Adolf Anderson played exactly that. Okay, now we're out of the book. <laughs> oh boy. Um, I'm going to do this because this knight will counteract against, I mean, this bishop will counteract against that bishop. If he comes up here, I got the same thing as I had before. Yeah, it's looking strong, looking strong. Um, this is nice. I'm going to bring that, I got to bring the bishop out because I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to castle. I'm just going to go for it. I'm going off or broke here. I'm going on that side. He took that pawn, but what can I do now? Let's see if I take him. It's got to be something I can do here. Let me suppose I take him. Come up here now. Oh, I know what to do. I'm going to do something tricky. I'm going to move this pawn up and then bring the queen out over here. Threatening this pawn. And threatening some other things at the same time. Okay, now I can take this pawn. Because, see, my queen's gone. My, I took my queen out of that danger. And now maybe this knight. See, now that the knight's gone, this pawn is in danger for him. So I'm going to take that pawn. Oh, I could have put him in check right there. Oh, I still will. Put him in check. And now I'll take the bishop. So this is a classic king gambit with a lot of stuff happening, like weird stuff you can't believe. All kinds of stuff happening. This is how way king's gambits are supposed to be. I got the rook out there. I'm going to develop because no matter how much I would love to just keep attacking, got to develop, you know. And it looks like if I double the rooks here, this knight doesn't look like it's going to danger me very much because, okay, now I want to bring the, the rooks down to here. I really want to do that. Suppose I brought my bishop to here and he took with his bishop or with his, if he takes with his queen though, hmm. see, I almost have a checkmate here. That's what I was looking for. Oh, but I could take this pawn, threatening his bishop, and get a checkmate too. I'm going to do that. You see the checkmate with the two rooks um, coming down here? I mean, it's not exactly a checkmate, but at least I get the, the queen. And I take that, and then... Let's see if I can do more stuff down here. So I put him there, check. I can't take this though. I wish I could. Um, I don't know what to do. I'm just gonna come up here because I'm completely at a loss. And this attacks this knight and I don't know, it's gonna open up his position. This rook is in danger if he has anything. Oh, you see? But he can't really checkmate me because I can bring my king up here. Okay, so now I can win a piece, basically. I make this knight move, and then I win this knight in a strong way because I put him in check at the same time. And if he comes up here check, it's not a big problem. I just come up here. Okay, that was good. Um... I think my strongest move is here. Now if he comes up here check, like I say, I just bring my 
My and my king only has one move. Okay, that looks strong for him. I'm gonna get my queen out of there. And then I'm just like calculating here a little bit. I didn't see any danger to doing this. I want to come up here immediately and try to get some more effect against stuff here. Interesting. Okay, so maybe I'll just... This is weird. Um... I think what I got to do in this case is come up here. I'm just checking that he can't. My king and my queen are not on the same color. And I knew he could probably get a check there, but suppose I come here. Can he check me again? Suppose I go over here. I just want to reduce his checks right now. I'm going to come over here because he can't check me with the the knight and he can't check me immediately with the rook and I think it's going to be all over if I can just have one more move because I can move the rook up threatening me here I can check him with my well this is checkmate with my knight it's going to be checkmate with my knight a after we play this we'll do a post-mortem um, so I'm going to take him oh no I can't take him there and get checkmate with my knight quite yet Wow, he's doing really resourceful here. Um, what should I do? It's going to be two, a queen against two rooks. Wow. I'm just kind of like looking things out, scoping things out, and I shouldn't be doing that because it's 36 seconds against. I thought I had a one game. But he suddenly got like really resourceful. I probably should have come up here. Ah, uh, yeah. I'll do that next move. I come up here, check, and then take with the rook, and then threatening the checkmate. But I can still do that. I, I just moved because I was wasting a lot of time on the clock, and I didn't see that immediately. I got to come up here, check. And if he comes over here with his rook, I can still do kind of the same thing because I'll come over here. I don't know. It gave me a little bit of time to think. I didn't, I didn't want to run down my clock, so I'm kind of glad I moved quickly. And I should be looking at a lot of million different uh, variations right now, but I don't tend to do that. I I have the one plan that looks like no matter what he does, I'm going to come up here. And if he surprises me, well then, <laughs> surprises me. But I think I'm, I'm just thinking that, looking at the position, he can't check me with this. He can come down here threatening against this pawn, but it's not going to be. I mean, I'm going to have... Maybe that's his strongest move, coming down here. Suppose he does that. Why didn't he just do that? Uh, let's see. I can come down. Oh, I could come down. If he moves his rook off the back rank, I can come down here, check. He brings the king up here. And then I can bring the queen here. Looks strong. Looks strong. Oh, look at that. Look at the time. Time is suddenly even. He's really thinking a lot right now. Let's see what's going to happen. If I win this, it'll be great. If I win this, maybe I'll go to bed. Who knows? I hope not. would like to keep playing if I can. 18 seconds? Are we going to win on time? We were so far down on the clock. Now it's suddenly it's going to win on time. He would love to do something, but he can. He's probably calculating a million checkmates that I have and forks and stuff, and he doesn't have, like, a lot of immediate things.
He's out. He's out of time. Okay. Jump right in on there in the chat. Tell me what you thought about that game. Does anybody, do any of my viewers think that it was halfway decent? Just write the, like the letters HD if you think it was halfway decent. Or write the letters PB if you think it was pretty bad. <laughs> Or write another combination of letters, and I'll try to figure out what it is. Just write two letters. So let's do the analysis board, shall we, and see see how it is. Uh, request. Request the analysis board. Wow, there's a lot of – there was a lot of stuff happening there. I don't know. Let's do one more because that game, it was so up and down. It doesn't look like a good game. We'll do one more game and then call it quits because we had like a lot of fun um, tonight. And it is the second day of Christmas and everything. I mean the eighth day of Christmas. It's the first day of the new year. And to do it up in really good style, we'll play one more game and then we got to bring the bishop out. This is a Carol Can. Always bring the bishop out as soon as possible. And bring that pawn up. I'm just kind of like playing by the book here. Kind of put some pressure against this pawn here. Now, if I take there, I just develop his queen. I think it's usually better to come back over there. And now I would like to put some pressure on that knight. Maybe he takes me there. If he does, if he takes me there, good. If he doesn't, okay, well, I'll figure out something else to get rid of that knight. Can already. Oh, I tried to move my knight up there. That was weird. I, I mean, I tried to move my bishop up there. I mean, I tried to move my knight up there, and instead I moved my bishop up there, and now my knight's up there. It's like nothing, nothing really worked correctly. Okay, so uh, we're going to have some weird stuff happening here. So now I got a knight up there because I was a little worried, really worried about, now I got to decide with the, that or with that. I think in one sense it looks good with this one, but I want to have like a lot of pawns on that side. I don't care if he advances on this side. I want to get some pawns over there. So, so far, so good, right? That looks strong. I need to protect this pawn. And also the queen comes down nicely against the king. As soon as I castle, which I'll do right now, I can move this pawn up. Unless he does that, um, then I gotta think of another plan. But I could still move that pawn up. I'm gonna move it up, see what happens. If he takes it, I take him there. My pawns look a little bit weak, these weird pawns, the way they are. See, this pawn's in danger. Should I come up with a I'm going to come this way because then I can come over here. That was good. I think that's good for me because he, he can't take with the rook. I take with the bishop. If he takes with the pawn, it blocks his rook and also opens this pawn up to attack. And if he does something else, I'm going to bring this rook over to the center, attacking that queen. Making his queen get out of Denver. Now, now what? I don't know what.
I don't see anything really to do. I'm just kind of moving around. What? Did I lose? How did that happen? And look at the brain waves, how low they went. Oh, they flatlined. And God, everything's down low. Well, anyway, we got good brainwave data out of it. I'm going to resign. Um, that was weird. That was a weird game. Well, it's only 1030 here where I am. So let's do one more. We'll do one more. And if we don't win this one, we got to get some chat. I got to get another follower. It's like so weird. Tonight's like nothing happening. What the heck is happening tonight? Why don't we just get some chat or a follower? I mean, it should be cool. It's the eighth day of Christmas. It's the first night of the new year. We should be lucky. Let's see how this works now. Okay, 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 okay. So far, so good. So far, so good, as they say. Um, the... So far, so good. It's still holding up. Still holding up, as they say. Just mixing stuff up a little bit. Got everything basically protected here. This spawn's protected by that night. Things are looking all right, I think. He can take this night I take there. It doesn't look too bad. It doesn't look too bad to me. I might gambit a pawn or something out of that, but... I don't know, I'm just going to do that and see. I'll probably lose the game horribly because of that, but. Yeah. He didn't do what I was hoping he would do. And then that's what happens when you do traps. I did like a little trap there and trap myself. But sometimes you do a trap and it can all go well in the end. We'll see if that's what happens this time. He can take me here, but it opens up a nice file for me. And I, uh, hopefully that's my only chance. If he takes with his knight, I'm going to move my knight out. I'm going to move this out because if he takes me with his pawn, his knight loses his protection. Which is kind of great for me. I could have made his knight move, but his knight's going to come over here anyway. So attacking my queen and my rook at the same time. I saw, I saw that even though I... This is bad. Oh, my. I don't have any hope. I don't have any hope at all. Now my knight is going to fall. Yeah. 
Maybe I can at least attack his knight. He's got two pieces ahead of me now. And he can win the ex in exchange right now too. Well, no, I can come over here. I mean, he won't win the exchange, but he'll get like a massive trade. I shouldn't bring the king over the corner because he can check me easy, easily with his knight. Oh, no. Now he can check me easily and win my queen. So, I don't know. We're really screwing up here. I should just quit because we had a good beginning, but I don't know. It is the eighth day of Christmas. I'm going to play one more and hopefully get one more spectacular game. We had like really good one, couple of really good games tonight. We had like a lot of great brainwaves. If we could just get one more, all we need is one more and I'll be happy. Just one more good game. And we can call it quits. And if we don't get it, we'll always say we should have got it. Okay, we'll just go over here and I don't know, there's different possibilities to do when they do that, but threaten him a little bit, maybe make the wrong move. That might not have been the best move. Hmm. Okay, I want to get some power build up here without being too obvious about it. I think he wanted to bring his bishop to here. I'm going to advance the pawns in front of my king. It's hard for him to castle immediately because I'll take a pawn. I mean, he can do that, just lose a pawn, no big deal. But I'm going to just come out here attacking that bishop. He'll have to do something to avoid losing that. And then maybe I can... Take advantage somehow. Suppose I took his pawn here. Doesn't look like I have enough time. I'm going to do the advance. I don't see what else. I know that looks like a weird move, but maybe it's extremely asymmetrical and can do something good. I got all my pieces protected and everything, so I'm just going to move this other pawn up. He comes out with that, but I have this move. If he takes this knight here, now I have the the queen and the bishop coming down into there. I don't know what to do, so I'm just going to get the queen and the bishop lined up. If this works, it'll be great. If it doesn't work, if he, if he blocks with the pawn, I got this pawn. Didn't work. But that's something, at least. Makes this square very vulnerable. If I can bring my queen over to here. But I should take his knight. 
No, but I can take his knight with my rook. I'm going to bring the queen over here, then up to here, and then in there. I think this will work for a checkmate. Okay, I'm going to lift a rook here because it looks a lot stronger than other possibilities. I'm just following through with my plan to bring my queen up into here and then up into here. And I don't know how he can thwart this because this pawn is protected. Oh yeah, he thwarted it pretty good. But that's why I lifted this rook because now the rook comes over here and what does he do? Put me in check, but I can take him with my bishop. And then that's checkmate. All right, so we got one game. Oh, look at my delta. Look how high it got. Oh, did you see when I immediately saw that checkmate? It's like everything went up high, and then you know, it was like stabilized really high, and now it's like climbing still a little bit higher. Excellent brainwave patterns. Excellent last game. Um, if you missed the first part of the broadcast tonight, go back and look at it because we did – a classic game by Adolf Anderson, 1950 win, 1950, 1851, June 6th in London against a guy named George. Uh, sounds like Peligro, <laughs> but it's not. It's like Peligar or something like that. I, I I shouldn't slight the guy. Let me let me go back because you know it's bad luck to pronounce mispronounce person's names. It's George Perdigal. Perdigal. Okay, so. 1851, June 6, London, and was a great game. King's Gambit accepted. Check it out. It's at the beginning of this. Then we had a really good analysis of uh, Carol Can that I won. And if Carol can, if Carol can do it, you can too. Um, just go ahead and remember that lemma and go back and. Check out all the postmortems on my Carol Cans tonight because we've been here for more than two hours. But you won't even notice the time going by as you're watching my channel because you just look at the brain waves. They're they're like it's just so fascinating to watch them go up and down. They're in real time. It's like you're looking inside my brain as I'm playing chess. So don't miss it. Go back, check everything out, and come back tomorrow because tomorrow is going to be the ninth day of Christmas. When all through the house, even if creatures are stirring, we're going to be moving our mouse here. And we're going to be doing some great um, chess games tomorrow night. So with no more else to say, we're going to tell you to all a Merry Christmas and to all a good night. So see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.